Welcome to topic two, electric fields. Electric fields were first observed long ago when it was observed that leaves and dust were attracted to petrified tree sap that had been rubbed with a cloth. Sap was originally called electron, but it is now called amber. Every charged object creates an electric field of force that in the space around it. Electric fields exist between positive and negative charges. What produces an electric field? The transfer of electrons from one material to another produce an electric field. Recall atoms made of uh, are made out of a positive nucleus and a negative and negative electrons orbiting the nucleus. Charges are neither created nor destroyed, just transferred. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract. So here we have unlike charges attract, so you have the positive and the negative attracting, you have the positive and positive repelling, the negative and negative repelling, and the positive and negative attracting. How are charges transferred? Remember, only electrons get transferred. So here's the wand is negative, the cloth is positive. Charges can be transferred by rubbing. Conductors are materials that allow electrons to move freely, so things like copper and aluminum. Insulators do not allow electrons to move freely, but can have their charges rearranged, so things like cloth and fabric. When, some, when charges are rearranged, this is called charge displacement. A neutral styrofoam ball that is coated with a conductive surface will be attracted to a positively charged acetate strip due to charge displacement. So acetate is just um, overhead projector plastic. Combing your hair can transfer charge. This charge attracts the opposite charge in another object. So the comb gains electrons from your hair and it attracts the cloth due to jar charge displacement. So the electrons are from the hair. The cloth is an insulator. So here, a plastic ball is held by a string. It is touched by a hard rubber rod and nothing happens. Why? There is no charge present. When the rubber rod is stroked against a piece of fur, charge is transferred from the fur to the rod and it becomes negative. Now the plastic ball is again touched by the rubber rod and after the touch the plastic ball flies away from the rod. That is because they have like charges so they repel. A force exists between electrical charges or electric charges. The more charged an object is, the greater the force of repulsion. So if you, if you rub the fur a little bit, you'll get a little bit of a repulsion. A little bit more, you get even more, and then a lot, and you get a lot of repulsion. Did you know, do all elements have the same electric field? The answer is no. Elements have different electric fields because of their differing number of positively and negatively charged particles. How do we know that electric field lines exist if we cannot see them? So here is an example of a magnet in iron filings. When we place two large equally opposite charged parallel plates close together in a petri dish filled with metal filings, the metal filings line up parallel to each other. How do we know which way the electric field lines go, from positive to negative or vice versa? 
How can we determine this by using, we can determine this by using a positive body test. The direction in which the test body will move is the direction of the electrical field. So here you have a positive test body and it will move towards the negative pole. So it will move towards the negative. Away from the positive towards the negative is the way that these electrical field lines will move. A positively charged object creates an electric field with vectors pointing away from the charge. A negatively charged object creates an electric field with the vectors pointing towards the object. So here it's showing that like and like repel. Here it's showing that opposites attract. Which circle represents the positive, the red or the blue one? Where is the electrical field strength the strongest, close or far away from the charge? So remember that the positive, um, the electric field lines point away from the positive towards the negative. So the red would be the positive and the blue would be the negative. And the field strength would be highest, closest to the object. Electrical field strength. There's an, equ an equation for determining electric field strength. And that is E is equal to EQ over R squared where E is the electric field strength in newtons per coulomb. R again is the radius of the source or center to center distance and Q is electrostatic charge of the source measured in coulombs. K is coulombs constant 8.99 times 10 to the 9th newton meter squared coulomb squared. The equation is found on page 2 of your data book. A coulomb is the unit of charge just like meter is the unit of distance. Plus 1 coulomb means an object has lost electrons. 1 negative coulomb means the object has gained electrons. Grounding means to, to provide a path for electrons to flow from an object towards the ground. Grounding wires are used in gasoline trucks to pre prevent a buildup of negative charge, which could cause an explosion. With a negative charge, electrons can jump, creating a spark and ignite gaseous fumes and cause an explosion. So that would be bad, which is why we need these grounding wires. How is lightning created? Lightning occurs when there is a buildup of negative charges at the bottom of a cloud. The top of a cloud becomes positive. This is, this is due to charge displacement. Since the opposite charges attract, the positive charges move closer to the surface of the earth. Electrons then flow in a conductive path downwards. When positive and negative discharges meet, light is produced. So that's your lightning. Did you know that a lightning bolt is hotter than the surface of the sun and travels faster than sound? You'll often see lightning before you hear the sound created by lightning, which is of course thunder. Even though lightning appears as though it is moving down from the cloud, it actually moves upwards. What are lightning rods? Lightning rods are metal conductors that are connected to the ground to help direct electrons towards the surface of the earth. A lightning bolt will always take the shortened path and will likely strike a tall conductor first. Where should you go during a lightning storm? The lowest possible point. 
because you're further away from the clouds, which is the source of lightning, and the electric field gets weaker as you move further away from the source.